call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a motion for the minutes of the January 8th, 2019 meeting. So moved. Second. If it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. Public forum? There is no one for public forum this evening. We will move on to presentations. Fall to the podium, Lori Rotolo, Tim Lukaszewski, and students uh, on Vaping Awareness and Tobacco 21 Local Law. Okay. My name is Lori Rotolo. Um, I am working with Tobacco Free Action Communities, and we do a lot of work in education on policy, um, tobacco policy. And we have been working with the students here at Ellenville High School because there has been, as you all probably are aware, a major epidemic of vaping going on. And so one of the education and awareness projects that we've been working on is getting the word out about the, um, the ingredients in vape products and pods and, and how kids are becoming addicted to them because of the level of nicotine in most of these products. Um, and as you know, in the past, tobacco marketing has uh, been targeting our youth uh, for years with packaging and flavors, and now the same is happening with um, vape products as well. So we, uh, we're trying our best to counteract that by putting together some of our own unique PSAs um, that the students have created, and here are some of them now. <laughs> um, so we worked with the students and we, we provided them with a lot of different resources and information on vaping and asked them to do some research of their own to come up with some real important information and data to share to educate especially students and parents on the dangers of these vape products and how it, they're not safe and they're not a safe alternative necessarily to smoking because of the ingredients and the nicotine which as we all know uh, provides that kind of response in the body that creates an addiction and what we're hearing is that these products have more and more uh, nicotine and students are using them more frequently and are also unfortunately using regular tobacco products as a result of this addiction. So here are two students that we've worked with and I just wanted to ask them to, to talk a little bit about what what are some of the, um, come on over, some of the things that they have learned from this research um, and what this project was like for you guys before we get into showing you their video and listening to some of the radio PSAs. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, ben Elise Malave. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, the, okay. So we made a, a PSA video, um, just sort of um, a bunch of information that everyone should know about vaping. Um, a bunch of stuff that we hear about on an everyday basis, us as students, is that um, most of the students are vaping as a safer alternative to smoking. And through doing this project, we actually learned that it's not actually safer. And I think you'll see a bunch of the information that we found in the video that you're going to watch in a little bit. Hello, I'm Isabella Ligatino. Also, we did learn a bunch about vaping and how people did say that it was a safer alternative and we learned it in fact was not and that it's like hurting people and that them thinking it's a safer alternative was like not true and yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what are you doing? 
Vaping, dude, wanna try? No, thank you. Vaping is really bad for you. Vaping can cause damage to your brain, heart, and lungs. <laughs> nah, man, you're making this up. No, really. A teaspoon of 12 milligrams e liquid for vape is equal to about 60 cigarettes. Whoa, really? I thought e cigs were way healthier than regular cigarettes. No, nicotine addictions are really hard to reverse. Whoa, that's crazy, man. Alright, I gotta lay off the cigs. Congratulations to Ulster County for passing the Tobacco 21 law. I can't believe that there are kids at the age of 13 vaping. Yeah, that's crazy, but with this new law that will come into effect, it will make it harder for high school students to get a hold of tobacco and tobacco products. Yeah, that's right, because the law raises the age to purchase tobacco and e-cigarettes from 18 to 21. This law will take effect January 1st, 2019. Thank you, Ulster County. Thank you, Ulster County. One in every five students start vaping by the time they're in high school. Of these students, 46% go on to use other nicotine products. Vaping and e-cigarettes can contain twice the amount of nicotine than cigarettes and can be addictive. Smoking isn't cool, neither is vaping. You won't be able to stop, so don't start. One in five high school students currently use a tobacco product in the U.S. E-cigarettes continue to be the most commonly used nicotine product among middle school and high school students. Although they are not cigarettes, they are just as bad. E-cigarettes and vapes contain nicotine, and that affects the brain development, which continues to age 26. So thank you, Ulster County, for joining other counties across the state, including Orange, Sullivan, Westchester, Albany, and New York City, that have already raised the minimum age of purchase to 21 for tobacco products. It's not safe to vape. Most vapes have nicotine, an addictive substance that can negatively impact an adolescent's brain development. One vape pod contains as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. Nicotine causes increased heart rate and blood pressure, lung disease, chronic bronchitis, and other health issues. Almost 60% of people who use e-cigarettes also currently smoke conventional cigarettes. The vapor exhaled by e-cigarette users can contain carcinogens, and it's a risk to nearby non-users, just like secondhand tobacco smoke. Be safe, don't vape. Did you know that 9 out of 10 people have tried cigarettes before the age of 18? Starting January 1st, Ulster County is passing a Tobacco 21 law. This law is raising the age to buy tobacco, e-cigs, and all vape products from 18 to now 21. The reason why this law is being passed is to reduce the usage of vapes and cigarettes in schools and by teens. Ulster County now joins Orange Sullivan and Westchester counties along with Albany and New York City. Thank you, Ulster County. Thank you, Ulster County. You don't know what you're talking about, bro. Vape is better than smoking cigarettes. Vaping cannot harm you. Vaping can definitely harm your body. Since 2011, vaping has become increasingly popular. Teenagers are inhaling chemicals, such as diacetyl, which when inhaled, it can affect lung capacity. In addition to lung disease, nicotine is also inside these cigarettes. Vaping also contains formaldehyde, which when inhaled, it can cause shortness of breath, nose, and throat irritation. Still sound harmless to you? I have double the amount of nicotine than cigarettes. I can rot your teeth. You still want to vape me, bro? No, man. This isn't for me. There are many dangers to vaping and e-cigarette usage. What is most dangerous is how much nicotine is in the vape. Teen usage in vapes and jewels has increased rapidly in the last few years and has become a popular trend in high schools across the United States. And teens who most likely vape are likely to try other types of tobacco such as cigarettes. Nicotine is very dangerous because it can increase heart rate, raise blood pressure to damaging levels, and can also affect neurotransmitters in the brain which can make you addicted to the device. Whoa, what are you doing? 
Vaping dudes, wanna try? No thank you, vaping is really bad for you. Did you know that all vaping devices are not risk free? Vaping can cause damage to your brain, heart, and lungs. Matt man, you're making this up. No really, 12 milligrams of e-liquid for vape is equal to about 60 cigarettes. Wow really, I thought vaping was way healthier than regular cigarettes. No, nicotine addiction is really hard to reverse. And vaping can lead to the addiction of other nicotine products, so be careful. <sighs> Guess I better lay off the vape. I don't know if um, any of you have heard, I've been hearing a lot on the radio, throughout the day I'm hearing all these jewel commercials on the radio, um, more and more in the last few weeks actually. So I think this is perfect timing for us to blast the radio waves with these counter messages that the students have created. Um, we hope to share these with the uh, Austin County Legislature and with several other radio public uh, access channels throughout the area. We also have connections, the TPAC has connections with radio stations that can give us some, um, you know, air time if we provide these PSAs and they will run them for us. So we're hoping to get them out on the airwaves uh, as soon as possible. And uh, any other you want to say about the yeah, and I, I like that. We've been working with Lori for several years with this, uh, starting with the tobacco marketing a couple years ago, how, you know, big, uh, big tobacco companies are advertising with kids. And, you know, we're always trying to get one step ahead. I, I always think it's important not just that I can curtail my curriculum to have students work on stuff that affects them uh, immediately. And I think that if you heard the radio, you heard every, I have 25 students in my class, and I think you heard about every one of their voices on there. So I think it's great to get each of their voices and you know so they've all you know been affected by this and hopefully if they're they, they, they've been thinking about it that hopefully that even if only one of them chooses not to it's been a success so um like i said uh these girls have been great they're they're go-getters they're you know and you know they take the cameras home they have a lot of fun with it and like i said i just think it's a it's a great message to uh to put out there and you heard some of these messages are almost outdated because it said they're going to, you know, starting January 1st. So we're thinking about changing those to as of January 1st, these to place so they stay more current, the messages. So the students, when they come back after reading this week, are going to re record a couple of these to make them more current so they can be used from this point forward. And I would like to ask what, what you guys would like to see us do with these and whether we, we can put a button on our webpage or something to put them on our YouTube channel. Or you know anything we can do, you know we're going to run them on WLV, you know, and then get them out to everybody. But anything you want us to add to these, or any ideas you guys have, we're always willing to. And any way we can help to educate parents, you know. So if they can, um, any way that you can think of that we can help educate parents as well, so that they understand what's happening. Because as, as parents, sometimes we don't realize that. A little thing that looks like a flash drive is really a, a vape pod, and we may be missing some vital cues. And so, any suggestions you have about how we can reach out to parents with this information would be helpful too. Well, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much, ladies. And, and Tim, I just want to say you, you, you and your students do a great job, and we're going to do our best to get that building project passed so you can have better facilities and continue to do the great work. Anybody else want to be heard? Iris? I just want to thank you. I think that it does make a difference. And, you know, my understanding is there is a problem all over the place. And um, I know that it'll be, I've heard something on the radio already. And uh, just appreciate it. And I would like to see if they can put up on the website. I think, you know, parents should have the opportunity to access this information and along with seeing one of our students. So, I appreciate it. Thank you very much.
it, uh, it's always the, the key to this is, is awareness. And awareness always plays a major role in whether you choose to use or choose not to use any type of drugs. In particular, bringing this to the forefront for the choice of using bait. So we thank you for that. Uh, we hope that people pay attention to this because it is not safe and we uh, hope they get the message. But thank you for, for your work and the students as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want to launch a report for uh, information and correspondence uh, from my and myself, uh, board members. Uh, two things. One, please mark your calendars for uh, next Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m. We have a special meeting slated to discuss uh, the, the scope of services uh, and the joint committee uh, proposals that are being put forward. Um, and we wanted to allow uh, enough time to have a full discussion on this so the report to be fully advised. Uh, originally, it was going to be on tonight's agenda, but it was a 10 minute rush job. And I feel if anybody can manage to have a rush. We're going to have a special meeting uh, so that we can have a full discussion and, um, uh, you know, really take a hard look at uh, 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 this proposal as well so we have plenty of time uh, next Tuesday at 6 to 8. Uh, we hope to see you there. 6 to 8. Uh, also, uh, we went through that workshop on the, uh, the, the uh, results of the referendum. Um, please uh, get your, uh, you know, prioritize your lists. Also get your questions to Vince as early as possible so that he can get them to the architects and the engineers so that when we do have our meeting uh, to go forward uh, to you know study the feasibility of going forward again and to uh, bring something back to to the public so we can have these meetings please um, get those questions to him so that uh, we can just get right to work at these meetings we don't have to sit there and go over the questions and wait for the responses if you get them to him you have a you know two or we had the meeting last week um, we gave you a month, so if you get them to him early as possible, he'll get you the response back so that you have the answers going forward. So when we do go into this meeting, we can just sharpen our pencils and get right down to work uh, uh, for that. Uh, that's all I have this evening, board membership. Nobody? All right, we will move on. There's no student report. Is there a student report? I don't have a student report. No student report. representative report. We'll move on to Superintendent Lisa Wiles. So I have uh, two comments tonight. Uh, we received correspondence from Kevin Cahill's office. Uh, our school district was included in other school districts in Ulster and Dutchess County um, to uh, participate in a technology and science lab equipment grant um, for the elementary school specifically. Uh, we did not get a lot of details on this, al although we are included in it. Um, the Benjamin Center is a center that's going to be facilitating the work, and uh, Vince is going to be going up on Thursday night. Uh, to Ulster BOCES for an informational meeting. So I really want to send some thanks out to Kevin Cahill, although he's not our representative. Um, he's been keeping us in the loop with some funding opportunities mm -hmm. that we're very grateful for. So as more information becomes available as to what the equipment is and what opportunities there are, uh, we will keep the board informed. Uh, the other thing is just a reminder that on February 8th and 9th, the middle school will be having the production Susical um, in our high school auditorium. So mark your calendars. I hear it's um, going to be a wonderful show. That's all I have this evening. Iris? Yes. yes. Um, I noticed in um, the elementary principal's report, she talked about Project Fit America, a mm -hmm. grant that they're applying for. And as I understand, it's a vote. People vote for it. So would we be, will we find out how we can vote when the time comes? Yes. I'm not sure exactly what to do, so we'll, I'll we'll make sure you count on we'll, you. Okay. We'll make thanks. sure that you get the information on, like on how to vote for the project. Great, thanks. Thank you, Superintendent Wiles. Uh, Assistant Superintendent for Business, Mr. Napoli. Thank you. The only thing I'd like to report on is on um, January 8th, we had a wellness committee meeting. It was actually a, a pretty productive meeting. We talked about how we can get some of the local farmers involved in our curriculum here. Um, we bounced around some ideas. Um, the elementary school is having a uh, K through five uh, roadrunners initiative. The kids log miles um, and then they report it back uh, to, their, to their building. 
Um, and then Mr. Moyer talked about the obesity planning grant. Um, he's an Angela more of an expert on that, but uh, it was actually a pretty productive meeting. And uh, I don't, we don't know when our next meeting is, but I'll be sure to let you know. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Superintendent, Ms. Angela Urbina Medina. Uh, nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Move on to personnel resolutions for this evening. Can I just ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, of Angela. Angela, how are we looking on the observations? Are we on pace? Yes, we are. We are. Some okay. of the buildings are a little ahead of the others, but they'll all get done this school year. Thank you. Thank you. Resolutions for this evening. Under 6.1, substitute security attendant upon the recommendation superintendent of schools be resolved that Sean Hart be appointed substitute security attendant at a rate of $15 per hour work for the 18-19 school year. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? If not, all those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.2, upon the recommendation of superintendent of schools be resolved that the appointment of Billy Spilios, registered nurse, be made permanent following successfully probationary period of six months effective January 23, 2019. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.3, upon a recommendation superintendent of schools be resolved the appointment of Gabriella McCombs, typist be made permanent following a successfully probationary period of six months, effective January 23, 2019. So moved. It's been moved. Second. Seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Lisa? Uh, it's unanimous, and it passes. 6.4, upon the recommendation superintendent of schools, be it resolved that the co-curricular personnel set forth list below be approved at the contractual rate listed for 18-19 so school moved. year. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.5. On the recommendation, Superintendent of Schools be resolved that Cherish Berry's appointment as a long-term substitute teacher be extended until June 30th, 2019, or the return of the teacher. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.6, .6, upon the recommendation, Superintendent of Schools be resolved that Rachel Hammersley be appointed certified substitute teacher at a rate of $125 per day worked on the 18-19 school year. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.7, upon the recommendation of superintendent of schools be resolved the resignation of Charles Murray III as long-term sub be accepted effective February 1st, 2019. So moved. Second. S moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.8. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools be resolved that Catherine Eckert be approved as a one-to-one -one aide to attend after-school activities with student number 10701031 as needed at a rate of 1916 per hour so work. So moved. It's been moved. Second. And seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. Under budget. Motion to move 7.1 and 7.2. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. Under education resolution for IEPs, be it resolved the attached list of student IEPs be acknowledged as appropriate. There are 21. So okay. moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries unanimous. Under construction, resolve the invoice EC22 payment for the electrical contractor in the amount of $12,274.95 be approved for JJ SAS Electric Incorporated. So moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. Under other field trip approval, resolve that the sixth grade class be approved to travel out of state to Jersey City, New Jersey to Liberty Science Center on June 4, 2019. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? The monies are in place. Vince? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries unanimous. The next meeting date will be next Tuesday, January 29th, but thereafter, uh, February 5th, will be our budget workshop number one. Mark your calendars for that, and also mark your calendars for our regular board meeting on February 12th, 2019. 
Uh, for the next few months, we will probably be meeting just about every Tuesday. Keep your calendars um, clear and mark them. And anybody want to see anything for the next agenda? Place on the next agenda. If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed, no one. We're adjourned.